about that house, huh? Thomas. No, sir, I understand you perfectly. I know where you're coming from, and I think, I think you mean well, but that's not what this issue is all about. But what you have to keep in mind is why these halfway houses exist and what they can do for all of us. That's not the way you talk, Councilman, when you were running. Look, we don't want that house on our street, and we don't want those criminals in our street. And you said we wouldn't have to have it. Uh, I did everything I possibly could. Then maybe we need someone in council who can do a little bit more. Get them off our street. neighborhood 10 years ago I figured it was a good place to raise a family and it still is I mean, we have a thriving community here that's why it was selected for this project uh-huh and how long is it gonna stay thriving with those convicts here councilman that's up to the people who live here and this meeting is a good example of that I mean if you people really care those are just platitudes Michael Mr. James McShane. he worked hard all his life to buy his house and then worked even harder to meet the monthly payments. Now, after all those years of sweat, now when he needed it most, all he could do is watch as the bottom fell out. My house was down, $20,000. It's hard to say how far this man's been pushed, but one thing is certain, he's going to push back hard, unless some justice, as he sees it, comes his way. a chance to get used to it. No, 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 we don't want to wait anymore. We want that place closed down and out of here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what this petition's all about. Yeah. And what we want to know is what you intend to do about it. Good. I'm just as upset about this situation as you are. Believe me, I think you people have been treated very badly. You know, Councilman McShane, we listened to you two years ago when all this talk started. And now it's here. And guess what? There's an election coming up in six months. Now, if you can't do something about convicts living on our streets, then maybe we ought to find someone else who can. As far as I'm concerned, this meeting's over. Ladies and gentlemen, told you I'd get killed if I came here. Here, Jerry! Jerry, here! Come on, here! Jerry, Jerry! Go. Hey, see you guys in the floor! Over here! I understand your concern, and that's why I want this place out of here and out of here now. I have a and kid. I cannot afford to have that. I was very impressed by what you had to say tonight. Now, I'm on record in the council. We don't want to hear it, Councilman. Now, either you do something about that halfway house, or we're damn well going to do something about it ourselves. Now, why don't you tell them that at City Hall? I've been telling them that at City Hall. Now, look, that petition you all signed tonight, that's a start. But I mean to say, it's, it's only a start. 
You want that house off this street, you gotta work with me. Now look, I'm on your side. <laughs> no, believe me. We want the same things, even if we go about it different. <laughs> Yeah, can I speak to Mr. Bonnier, please? What time do you expect him? Okay, uh, could you please ask me to call a Detective Brody? Yeah, Homicide Division. Okay, thank you. Was your mother having trouble with, with anyone? No. Did she have a boyfriend? No. Is there anything you can tell us that, uh, that would help us out? Anything that wasn't going right? No. Kevin? I'll talk again, sir. Excuse me. Can I? Okay, sir. Yeah. I'll try at least half a dozen people. I can't reach anyone. Oh, you're right. Should I take him anywhere? You won't go anywhere. Stay with him. Don't let him talk to anyone. And don't let him in that front room. Okay. Hi, Jimmy. Kevin. Yeah. yeah. Right. Take a look at this. Forensics found this in the bushes. What is it? It's a tape. It's still sticky. Someone taped the door open so they can get back in. All right. Let's see what else they find. Let's go pay a call on this halfway house everyone's talking about. We warned her about talking to those animals, and now look where it got her. Can I complain? Write it down. Oh, yeah, sure. Just walk away. If you want to do good counseling, tell all those people to go home. I thought I could. I would. But these people want answers. What do you got so far? Not much. Look, I don't want to interfere with the investigation, but I do represent these people. I feel I'm entitled to know what's going on. I don't want you stirring things up. Got my word, O'Brien. Uh -huh. All right, come on. Get out of here! It's like being in a war zone. Exactly. Get them out! Hi, Kate. Who's she? It's Kate Chaffee, program supervisor of the social welfare department. Just what we need. Kate Chaffee, this is uh, Detective O'Brien, John Bonney. Hi, this isn't please. the only house in the block that you're investigating. No, it isn't. But it is the first. Well, let's see if I can answer some questions for you. Um, we have six boys here in the house. We're set up to have 15, but we were only able to open last month. Um, oh, why don't we go and talk about this in my office? Um... I have been here all evening, and five of the boys were in the other room watching the football game on TV. Well, what about the six? This isn't a town meeting, Counselor. Let me ask the questions. The missing boy is David Burnham, and I'm sure he's not involved. So you know where he is? Yes. As a matter of fact, he has a job over at the car wash, and sometimes they keep him a little late. Don't these places usually have a curfew? Mm-hmm. Nine o'clock. It's ten after ten. Would you say that's more than just a little late? I'd say that was missing. Councilman, I know how you feel about this project. What's the hell's the point of having rules if you don't bother to enforce them? I'm not telling you again, sir. You keep it up, you're out of it's here. It's no wonder the people out there are worried sick about the operation of this place. We do enforce our rules, Mr. McShane. Of course, we've got penalties for curfew violation. These, these are boys we're talking about, and I, I'm sure they've all been late at one time or another. Well, this is not just one time or another. Oh, yeah, and he's an ex-con, so that automatically makes him guilty, right? I'm just trying to get a few answers here, lady. Now, wait, wait, wait just a minute. I got a 10-year-old boy whose mother's been killed a couple of houses away. I got a lot of angry neighbors out in the street who want an explanation. I'm trying to conduct a police investigation. I don't need to hear speeches from either of you. I'm not making speeches. I just want to know what you're doing about that suspect. Obi? Yeah, I don't have a suspect. What do you got? We found a couple of witnesses who saw Tony Shire exercising at 845. The meeting broke up at a quarter after nine, which just after that, her son found her body. Look, O'Brien, what are you going to do about that missing boy? When I find him, I'll question him. Uh, Detective O'Brien, could, could you keep an open mind about this? I mean, David, he's a very quiet boy, and I'm sure there is a very good reason that he's late. He also could have killed that woman. 
And while we're sitting around here waiting for that very quiet boy to give us his very good reasons, he could be out there waiting to do it again. All right, all right. Please, come on out. Sir, oh, please, please don't. Sir, I don't want to charge you with interfering with a police investigation. Please call the detective. All right. Come on, Thank you very much. All right. Now, Miss Chaffee, I want you to give all the information you have on David Burnham to the detective here. And if this guy isn't back in five minutes, put it out on the radio. Do you have any idea what David Burnham might be? Yeah, I knew it was one of them. Hey, what are you cops going to do about it? O'Brien. O'Brien? Are these people have a right to know what they're up against, O'Brien? Grandstanding going on in there and out here. I can hardly wait to see what the hell you're going to write about. I'm going to write about that 10-year-old kid everybody seems to have forgotten about. You going to wait here or you want to live? No, no, the story's here. I'll see you later. All right. that house, I think we'll close up early tonight, so you go upstairs, okay? I'm just going to fix myself something neat first. Okay, but uh, don't be too long. No. And uh, Mary, leave one of the lights on tonight, okay? Yeah, okay. a chance with them. I'll call the police. They'll protect you. I'm a con. Don't you know what that means? All the cops are going to do is send me away. I shouldn't have come here. David! Well, what about me? Don't we mean anything to you anymore? Sorry, I just, I just won't let our baby be born without a father. Mary, no, I... Please, please, just give yourself up. Just tell them the truth. I know they'll believe you. Okay, okay. Why can't I say no to you? It's okay, there's nobody around. I'll go with you. You two better stay out of it. About. It was something about, You uh, didn't see a movie, did you, Burnham? And I was walking around. From noon until now, you're just walking around? I was walking around, yeah. Some reason I can't do that? What are you trying to hide, huh, Burnham? It doesn't get worse than murder one, you know. 
Why did you run, Burnham? I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. How many times do I have to tell you that? I killed Kevin. Stabbed 12 times. Yeah, that is pretty brutal. Uh, what's the point? The point is, I can't help thinking about Tony Shire's son. Well, that doesn't change the case we got against Burnham. God, I want someone to pay. Somebody got into that house and made that little boy an orphan. And it could have been anyone on that street, anyone she knew. There's hundreds of people. And half of them were at that meeting. You got to do it step by step. Wonderful. Wait a minute. That petition. Everybody at the meeting signed a petition. Start there. Run it down. Come on, Frank. Hi. Do I have to tell you, Kevin, this one has minefield written all over it. Tread lightly. Very. Well, that doesn't change what we've got. Nothing. Nothing? No physical evidence? No, well, he's clean. No blood stains. There was blood all over the place. No evidence of sexual activity. He could have taken a shower, changed his clothes. In the middle of the street. He didn't have time to get back to the halfway house unless he planned the whole thing, which I don't buy. Give me something, Kevin. What do you want me to tell you? I don't think he did it. Well, he's doing a damn good impersonation of someone who did. He ran. His alibi's full of lies. Now he's sitting over there in a cell, cool as a cucumber. Tony Shire was killed with a knife. He did time for cutting someone. They're reaching, Elaine. He used a knife on a guy in a fight. No history of sexual crime. Well, Miss Social Worker wants him released forthwith. You're certainly going to make her happy. You got any problems with this one, Frankie? No, go along with Kevin. I'll get him. Look, I don't think there's any question that he was lying. I just don't think he was in Tony Shire's house when she was murdered. You made the call. Let's just hope you're right. Let's go. All right. You gonna bring him back to the same house? Of course. Well, it might be wiser to let things simmer down for a little. But Ryan, the, the, the people on that street have been against this project from the very beginning. Now, they've done everything in their power to interfere with it. They've done everything they possibly can to make sure it fails. And you are going to help their cause. What, what do you mean by that? You let that kid back on the street, you're rubbing their noses in it. If, if, if I don't, I'm admitting that everything they've said so far is true. And right now, you know, that halfway house is the only home he's got. It's not charged with anything. I would be right in the world to be in that house. And I might add, that house has every right in the world to be on that street. You don't agree, huh? I didn't say that. You didn't say anything. I can second guess you, Kevin. He looks like an angel. and the crooks, they have rights and lawyers and houses, while the working people get stop. squat. I got two daughters, and I'll tell you right now, if anything happens to my family, something's gonna happen to them. Okay, all right, just calm down, okay, sir? I'll tell sir? you something right. else. 
They're using drugs in there. How come yeah. you don't do nothing about that? Well, that's a serious charge. Let me take that down. What's your name, sir? What's that got to do with anything? Please? Well, you wanted to file a complaint, didn't you? Well, don't you? Oh, Bill Whelan. Bill Whelan. Go on. Tell them about the time you were yeah. wiring the house, Bill. Go on. Sure. Sure. Go on. A couple of months ago, we had a contract for rewiring the house. Yeah? I saw them. They were doing drugs. Well, why didn't you report this before, Mr. Wheeler? Maybe we could have done something. Yeah, sure, yeah. like hell. Yeah. Well, I'll take your statement, yeah. and we'll check it out. That's the best I can do right now. Okay, everybody else, do you want to just go on? Right up to the sidewalk. Right up to the sidewalk, okay? All right, back right up, okay? All right, sir, what's your statement then? What were you saying? Nah, forget it. Ain't gonna do any good anyway. Come on, guys, let's go. All right, tell you. Trying to prove how stupid you are, you're doing a damn good job of it. They're all saying I killed her. What am I supposed to do? Think starting the riot helps? They started it. Well, you're gonna fight the whole block, right? Good, good. I'm not letting anyone push me around. Hey, hey, come here, come here. Now, you listen to me. I don't know what kind of trouble you've been getting into, but it can't be worse than murder. Just mind your own business, huh? This is my business. I want to know where you were. What for? You're trying to pin this on someone. And I don't think you give that much of a damn if it's me or the guy next door. You got a big chip on your shoulder, you know that? Can't you tell when someone's trying to help you out? I'm not asking for any of your damn help. Just leave me alone. What? Okay, okay. I'll grant you he's not being very cooperative. But listen, you gotta re you, listen, you've got to realize what he's going through. Do you know, for instance, that someone called tonight and threatened to kill him? It's been tough on everyone, Miss Chappie. I need a holiday. Unit 12-7. 12-7, O'Brien. Perpetrator known to you involved in assault on female. Hang on to him, we'll be right there. And speed it up, we wouldn't want to miss this. Miss what? You'll see. You will not see. Do you know what this is about? You shut up and drive. I don't ask so many questions. <laughs> I should have guessed. Assault on a female? There you go, Barney. Hurry. Said you know him, though. Look, I told you, it wasn't even my hand. What hand? Oh, this flat Over hands. there. Oh, my God. God. That's disgusting. Hey, come on, guys. Look, I know what you're thinking, but they, they have a will of their own. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do a thing. That's what you said last week about the fire extinguishers, Way. Right? Hey, come on, Oprah. Look, tell me something, Jam. But work your comedy routines out on something else, will you? I got a serious problem here. And what are we supposed to do about it? Well, tell him you know me, will you? Oh, well, we know him. Huh? That's it? We know him? What about we love him? He's our main man. Let him He's go. He's a pervert. Yeah, fuck yeah. him. Hey, come on, guys. Hey, this is not, it's not a joke, huh? Is there no time to develop a sense of humor, huh? All right, Barney's done a couple favors for us. Why don't you let us have it? Leave the oh, handcuffs on. Let's see if he can be cooperative. Hey, come Get on. Back Wait, what about these cuffs? Come on, Listen, I forgot I... my key, OK? I got in merchandise in to take in care of. What? Not in the back seat? No, come on. In the I back seat. I got a car seat. stick in the back seat. In there. You guys are going to regret it. This car seat. Hey, Scott Bonnie! <laughs> Thanks a lot, Barney. It's our lap for the day. Anytime. Keep your feet down, Whitey. Hey, look, come on. What is this, man? Where are we going? We're not going anywhere. The car's moving, isn't it, O'Brien? Why don't you remember who your friends are? End of the line. And don't say we never gave you a hand. A <laughs> hand. That's funny, O'Brien. Real comedian, huh? And listen, O'Brien, I'll give you a... I talked to ten others, and they all had good alibis of one kind or another. Right, we'll finish up the list and cover everybody on the block. Yeah? Okay. What about the people she worked with? She was an aerobics instructor. Uh, one of the girls that she worked with talked to her earlier that day, and I'm still trying to reach her. Well, check with the other instructors she worked with. See if she had any kind of social life, boyfriends, people she knew, you know. Yeah. Good. You know, Obi, it's getting to be ride time out there, Obi. You try talking to anyone in the neighborhood, and they thought, where if I got you? How come we're the ones you're questioning? How come you ain't questioning Burnham? Well, we got to keep on. It's not going to quiet down till we break it. Well, what are the chances of that happening soon, Kevin? <laughs> how am I supposed to answer that? Well, how am I supposed to answer these phone calls that I'm getting? When someone puts a squeeze on me, I squeeze back. That's part of the job. Well, who's squeezing? Well, do you want to start with Chief of Detectives? He's already telephoned us to remind us to make sure that we investigate Burnham thoroughly. Book or clear? What are we going for here? Well, either one. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, this thing is getting political. And the department does not want to get caught in the middle of it. Now, if you can't prove that he did it, then prove that he didn't do it. Just come up with something clean and conclusive. 
before that whole damn street blows up on us. Does anybody remember what this case is about? All right. Call it a night. Okay, good night. All of you. We've been over that. No. Yeah, but you saw what they were like last night, and they've been talking. David, David, we can't keep it a secret much longer. Tell them. Come on. You know how he hates people hanging around. He'll get me fired. Please, David. Hey, I need this job. I'm working for us, remember? Come on, man, I gotta work here. So we gotta live around here. We think everybody should know about you, Burnham. Everybody. Sure, I understand. You got a business to run. I understand perfectly. They're not messing around, kid. They can close me down. I don't see why those people have to put up with that place. I mean, aren't there enough sleazeballs out there already without the city dumping them on people? Try trying to kill it. Yeah, look, hey, they don't actually dump them in there. There's 24-hour supervision at that house. A social worker. You call that supervision? I call that stupid. He's right, you know, Tommy. They're tough kids. Well, what would you do? Leave them in jail till they're really tough and then dump them out under the street? <laughs> I don't know. We've tried that for years. They just bounce right back in there as fast you don't as think you can they catch bounce back right now? Half the people we arrest, somebody arrested before, and that's a fact. Fact. You can't make that go away. Well, maybe it would go away if there were more halfway houses. Their recidivism rate is a lot lower than prisons. You think the people in the street give a damn about the receiver, res whatever it is, rates? Those people work hard to make a decent living for themselves, and now they're just going to give that up so that a few punks can stay out of the slammer? Look, you are not seeing the complete picture, Frankie. Tell me about it. Look. Letting these guys out and putting them right back on the street isn't working. So we have these houses, but these houses have got to go somewhere. Yeah? How would you like to have one next door to you? Oh. 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 Only yeah. All, right. Yeah. all right, no. No, I wouldn't. I, um, I would be worried that something might happen to Mark, but I would like to believe that I could overcome that. I mean, let's face it, it is a sacrifice, but it will benefit in the end, I know that. You would like to believe that, but you don't. Yes, I would like to believe it. Sure, yes. it's easy to believe it while you're just talking about it. I'd like to see you believe it if it was happening. Oh, wait a uh. minute, Frank. People have principles. They don't always bail out on them just because it's not their own self-interest. Her son's interest. Uh, I know what you're saying. All right. You can't always just take care of your own family, all right? What would happen if everybody thought that way? I mean... Everybody does think that way. Oh. No, that's no answer. Oh, you have the uh, answer, do you? Yes, I do. The answer is, there is no answer. Hey, hey. Oh, oh, hold on a second. Let him finish. Go on. My mind. <laughs> like, the men who go through a halfway house, like, return to crime less often than the men who don't. I mean, that's been demonstrated. There's wow. lots of facts to prove that. Yeah. In that sense, halfway houses are beneficial to everybody. Less crime in the streets. Mm -hmm. And the people who live in the neighborhoods where these houses are will also benefit in the end. Yeah, well, there's a, a little catch there. I mean, these people are ex-criminals. A percentage of them are going to commit crimes again. Some of those crimes will be against their neighbors. That's just the way it works. It's like uh, a garbage dump, uh, an airport, urban renewal. Everybody benefits, only a few pay. And you think that's fair? Fair, Schmear, Frankie. Don't put me through. <laughs> well, I think it stinks. This is on the house, sir. <laughs> Get 
fired me. They scared him and he fired me. What do you want? I oh, just want to make sure Mary's okay. Shouldn't be alone with that guy. He's dangerous. You get out of here and leave us alone. Well, 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 what do you know? Looks like Pretty Boy's found himself a new girlfriend. You gonna cut this one up like the last one, Bruno? Get out! Now! What's the trouble here? The trouble's with your daughter, Trina. We're just trying to help her out. They're the troublemakers, Papa. They're trying to start a fight with David. He's a good boy. I've never had any trouble with him. No trouble. Is that right? You're kinda new here, aren't you, Mr. Trina? You know very well I'm not new here. I've been here 12 years. Yeah, well, 12 years. But you're not from here. Now, a lot of us grew up in this neighborhood. When a foreigner is living in a place, you ought to listen to how the people there feel. Don't you dare insult my father. All right, Mary, I can take care of this. I want both of you out of my store right now. You don't want me in your store, but you want this halfway slime in your store. Is that it? See, we have a nice neighborhood here, Mr. Trina. Now, these kids are coming in, and they're ruining it. The people like you who don't know what the score is are helping them do it. I've got a wife and a baby, and I don't want my neighborhood going to hell. God, you've got a kid. Doesn't it bother you? Don't you get it? She's putting out for halfway here. I'll take you all apart, the book of you! David, go! Go! Stop it! Let's see what you can do. Stop it! Get out of my store! I don't want to be part of this. David! You're crazy, Burnham! David! You're crazy, Burnham! You're crazy, Burnham! Hello, yes, uh, my name is Dominic Trainer. Please give me the police. O'Brien with the knife. You satisfied? You didn't have anything to do with provoking it, did you? Oh, yeah, sure. Stick up for him. He pulled a knife on me and Phil Whelan. We told you it was dangerous. Jumping two guys, that does sound dangerous. Hey, look, we could have been killed. And it wouldn't have happened if you would have held on to him when you had him. I don't need a lecture. You want to file a complaint this time, Whelan? No, I told you already. I don't yeah, want you're to... damn right. We'll file a complaint. All right, take him in and let him file a complaint. You don't mind if we problem. question the other witnesses, do you? Mr. Trenton? Yes. Detective O'Brien, this is Detective Jambone. Would you mind telling us what happened? They came in here to start trouble. I asked them to leave, but they wouldn't you are... listen to me. Mary Trina. Mary Trina. How well did you know Burnham? Well, she was upstairs. She didn't see anything. You we don't have, have to, to check talk it out, to my Mr. daughter. Trina. I have to check out everything. I know, but she's just a child. She didn't see anything. Uh, you don't have to check with her. Uh, that's all right. Would you mind coming downtown and giving us a statement? Yes, I'll do that. You aren't going to arrest him, are you? I think you'd be safer with us than out in the street, don't you? Thank you. Yeah, what are we going to do about this? Uh, Brian, is it true? Did Kid Burnham knife someone? There was no knifing. There's conflicting reports about what happened. Detective, please find him. Don't let them hurt him. We're doing our best. He didn't kill that woman. Why didn't you tell me about it? He didn't. I knew where he was. He was here with me in the house. My father was out. Mary! Please. Mary! Don't tell him. Okay, Mary, right. come inside. Hey, Mike, Mike, just a second. I want to talk to you. There was an incident with that kid, Burnham. He pulled a knife. Oh, my God. No, no, it's okay. Uh, we took care of him, but he got away. We're letting everybody in the street know. Well, of course, of course. Listen, there's a warrant for his arrest, but he's out there somewhere. Just keep your windows and your doors locked and your eyes open, okay? Listen, Mikey, don't worry too much. We'll get this kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, right? sure, sure. Come on, sure.
I've been putting together what Tony Shire did the night she was killed. You get anything? Not a hell of a lot. She worked at an exercise club. She didn't have a boyfriend, divorced two years. Her ex-husband lives uh, on the coast, and he pays child support like clockwork. Mm -hmm. Someone was in that house and taped that door. Now, here's the thing. The dry cleaners made a delivery. I checked on the delivery boy. He was in a high school basketball game the day she was killed. I talked to her son. He's doing fine. He's going to stay with his father. Now, he says he had a couple friends over, but they're like 12 years old. That's it. This might be some. I talked to one of the women she worked with, and she said she was talking to Tony earlier on the phone that day, and all of a sudden, this electrician shows up at her front door. What electrician? Well, it's the thing. This guy shows up out of the blue Let to check on a... This guy shows up out of the blue to do a follow-up check on some wiring he did on a clothes washer or something. He's not even on the list. Who is it? Whelan, the guy who had the run-in with Barnum. He's also the guy who accused of being stoned all the time. The guy's a maniac on halfway houses. He doesn't even sign the petition. Huh. All right, he must have had a contractor. Call him up, find out about that. It's you and me go pay a call on Mr. Whelan. Yeah. contract that you work for. He said there was no reason for you to be there. We know you're at the meeting that night, and we're doing a type check on the blood on your boot right now. We uh, have a pretty good idea how it happened. Thought you might like to give your side of it. So, it's got nothing to do with me. I didn't hear what you said. I said it's it's not my fault. It was her. Walking around like that. Shaking it everywhere. Just asking for it. She was asking for it the whole time I was working in there. You know those things they wear? Showing everything they got. Making you want it so bad you can't stand it. And acting like some kind of damn queen or something if if you just want to touch him. Just like he was dirt. Like like it'd rub off on him or something if you if you just laid a hand on him. And all the time they're they're looking like that. And so you killed her. here, O'Brien. Let the criminals go free and, and lean on the taxpayers. He confessed, McShane. He killed the woman. 
thank God. You can relax. Your program is off the hook. Please, wait. I, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I, it's just that I've been very worried about David. Um, O'Brien, you've got to find him, you know. He's not safe out there in that neighborhood. It's ridiculous. They're decent law-abiding people out there. They were until you started stirring things up. I don't need this. Miss Chaffee, go home. We'll be looking for him. Where are you going? I think I know where he might be. Who? The trainer girl. Where? His girlfriend. He was there the night she got killed. That's why he lied. Come on. Oh, David! Oh, David, I've been so worried about you. I'm all right. The police are looking for yeah, you. Figured. Those men, those men said you attacked them, but Daddy told them what really happened. Oh, yeah, that's good. Listen, uh, I just wanted to tell you, I can't stay around here. The cops are going to get me. If the cops don't, these maniacs will. No, David, those cops, they believe me. They don't think you killed that woman. you got to trust them. I don't trust anybody. Look, I'm never going back to prison. Just tell them where we were, David. I already told the detective. I'm not ashamed of it, David. It doesn't matter. I pulled a knife on those guys. But Papa told them what happened. It's a parole violation. Just go leave me. I'll get a job. When I get an apartment, I'll send you. No, you won't. You go away and I won't see you anymore. Am I going to run out on you? Am I going to run out on our baby? I got to go. I love you. David! Please, go home. It's no. David. Don't no, you understand? No, you. you can't come with me. David! David! No, please, please. No, oh, David! No, no, David! Oh, Mary. No, David, no. Stay with me, please. They'll God. catch you! David! Oh, David! life is in shambles because he shot him. Like a disease spreading through a once healthy body, distrust and hatred invaded these streets, eating away at the soul of a neighborhood. fear strangers, we become strangers to ourselves. This doesn't make any sense. The way it is in war, up defending, attacking, not going anybody tell the difference. There is no difference. People get hurt either way, right? 